Right, time to do this in these silly headphones because it's the only microphone I've got that's decent. Hi everyone, Zoe here. So those of you who follow me on Twitter will have noticed my orcs that I've been putting up and I've had a lot of requests about how I do the weathering on them. So I thought I'd do a little video tutorial for this guy on how you actually go about doing that weathering. It's not difficult, but there's a lot of different stages to it and it kind of takes a bit of time to start with, but we might as well get going. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prime it all, the entire vehicle in lead belcher. So you want to make sure you cover everything in that lead belcher spray, get into all the nooks and crannies. It's really important, especially if it's colored plastic like this. And then you wait for it to dry. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to get this Balthazar gold paint and pick out details on the model now it's been sprayed. This includes anything like engine exhausts, coverings, pipes, anything like that. Okay, so I've got all the bronze done on this, just a flat color of Balthazar gold. Done it on the gun as well, and a little bit on here. Basically anything that's like a tank or a pipe or anything that you think should be a different color to the silver base you're using. Um, I've done it with different kinds of um, dark metal as well, a brown metal. So at this point, what we need to do is give it two coats of shade all over the entire model. I did this even with the uh, blaster jet, which was all blue, but that was fine. And uh, I had to do a little bit of fiddling, but it still worked. First color I'm gonna do is Nuln Oil. And then once that's dry, I'm gonna do a coat of Agrax. Now I do this with an airbrush just cause I've got one, but it'll work just as well with a regular brush. Um, on a big vehicle like this, airbrush is faster, but it doesn't matter as long as you leave it time to dry and it is going to take some time to dry. So let's go do that now. The first color we're going to be airbrushing on is Nuln Oil. I'm just going to put it straight over the model. It goes straight into the airbrush, no need to thin it. And just blast it all over everything. Again, light the spray, make sure everything is covered and don't lay it on too thick because it will darken it a lot. And then we wait again. Next color is going to be Agrax Earthshade. Again, airbrushed on. This is going to make the metal look greasy and old. Go straight into the airbrush, no need for thinning like the Nuln Oil. And again, we're just going to spray it all over everything. And then we're going to wait again. Right, so now that's dry, I've got the spoiler from the Shock Jump Dragster to show you how I'm going to paint on the actual blue and white and rust. First color I'm going to use is Calador Sky to do the main base coat for all the blue. I'm going to get a really decent brush, nothing too beaten up, but I don't want anything perfect. And what I'm going to start doing is painting on the blue. I'm going to make sure I'm not getting on anything on the skulls or the cogs or the dags because these are going to be white and I'm going to aim to paint in the middle of all the armor plates. I'm not going up to the edge because I want that to still look metal and dirty like the paint has been chipped off or badly applied in the first place. Just keep going until all the parts you want to be blue are blue. Now that's done, you can see I haven't gone quite to the edges and I've left any of the parts I want to be white, bare metal for now. I'm going to use this trashy brush for this next step. I'm going to get Techless Blue, which is the next layer up from Calador Sky. And what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to use this bad brush to stipple the paint into the middle. Like this. 
Again, I'm going to make sure I don't go to the edges and focus on the middle of the armor plate. It's a stippling motion, and this is where we need to use an old brush because this will absolutely wreck any brush you use it for. So make sure you guys, you've got some brushes earmarked for this process. Keep going until all the blue is covered to your satisfaction. Now that's done, it's time to think about the next step, which is to paint all the white areas. So the skull, the dags and the cogs. I'm going to use Celestra Grey for this and I'm going to use that same brush I used to paint the Calador Sky on. So a decent brush but nothing too good because we're going to be a little rough. I'm going to start painting the, all the grey into the centre of all the areas I want to be white eventually. I want to take care not to paint on the blue or anywhere else that I don't want to be white. Focusing on the centre of armour parts and details. Once all those bits are done to your satisfaction, we can move on to the next step. Now that the Celestra Grey is on, it's time to get our beaten up brush for the next layer. I'm going to use Ulthuan Grey for this next part. Again, like we did with the Teclis Blue on the Kalador Sky, I want to start stippling the Ultraman Grey onto all the parts that were Celestra Grey. These parts are smaller than the large armor plates we painted with Teclis Blue, so we're going to have to be a bit more careful. Make sure you try to maintain the point of your beaten up brush, even if it is beaten up, to make sure you don't get any of the Ultraman Grey where you don't want it to be. Keep doing that until it's all covered to your satisfaction. Right, now that's done, there's really only one stage left. We've got all the base colours on, and while we could go brighter on the white, I think it works for orcs to keep it a little bit dingy. What we're going to do now is streaks of rust. To do this, I'm going to get P3 Bloodstone, which is a red-brown colour. Now, using a good brush, we're going to take some watered-down Bloodstone and start applying it to all the rivets, armor panels, chips, and any other gaps in the armor where water or other corrosive elements might have settled and rusted out the metal. You don't want to go overboard with this, but it does give a neat effect. So make sure you do it, again, to your satisfaction. Right, that's what the armor panel looks like with all the weathering applied to it. This is basically finished. When I do the rest of the model, I can stick this on and I'll be happy with it. Again, like I say, I didn't go too bright with the white because I thought it still looked good if I kept it a little dingy. But if you did go brighter, the rust would really stand out. This is what the effect looks like on two finished models. Again, it works really well with orcs because of their messy nature, but it would also look really good on any kind of old machinery, Death Guard vehicles, maybe even something like Gene Stealer cults. I hope you've enjoyed watching this, and I hope you want, might want to try it yourselves, and I'd love to see any examples of it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you for the next one. Bye!